there and welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Angie and I'm a chemist who loves makeup. And we're going to be talking about an issue that recently occurred with a product from Patrick Starr's brand, One Size Beauty. The product that customers were having issues with was the Until Dawn Mattifying Waterproof Setting Spray. This product seems to sell out pretty regularly and I believe it launched in 2021. From a quick search that I did, it was definitely available no later than November 2021. The major issue occurred for at least two customers, at least there were two TikToks that were posted about this specifically. The, these TikToks showed that when these customers used the setting spray, instead of being a wet, transparent setting spray, it almost sprayed a white powder all over their face. Clearly you can see from these screenshots this basically would have ruined any makeup that they had underneath and they would have had to start completely over. I don't think they could salvage this. Some people are trying to say this was user error, but I don't think so. Before we get into some theories on why this happened, I want to break down some of the ingredients in this product so that way you can understand how this product is supposed to work. The ingredients in highest concentration of this formula are the propellants. These propellants are what is used to propel the spray out and that is gonna be butane and isobutane. The next ingredients that we're gonna have are the solvents. So the ones in highest concentration are alcohol. I'm not sure why it has denatured alcohol and alcohol separated. They should be the same thing. I'm thinking maybe the second alcohol ingredient was possibly a raw material blend, a group of raw materials that were grouped together. So maybe that's why they separated because on that packaging, it said alcohol. In my experience, these are the same exact thing. I don't think they should have been separated like this unless either of those is not ethyl alcohol, but they both should be based on the inky naming. There's also a little bit of water. There's not a ton. Again, this is supposed to be a mattifying setting spray. It's not gonna have water in high concentration or even ingredients that are water friendly because that would cause it to break down more over the day. Another main ingredient is going to be the absorbent. This is what's gonna help absorb oil. This is gonna help with that mattifying and that is magnesium carbonate. This is actually one of the few solid raw materials that is going into this product and it comes as a white powder. If you look it up, this is how it looks. Another one is the tackiness reducer and emollient to give a very smooth feeling to the skin and that's diisopropyl adipate. This has a light feeling. Another big ingredient in this formula is a film former. This is the one in this formula. This is gonna allow it to dry down, make it resistant to wear. These are the type of ingredients that you find in formulas that boast long wear ability. We're not gonna name them all, but there are preservatives in this formula, such as phenoxyethanol. You do have a little bit of water. You have glycerin in this formula. These are things that you probably want to add the preservative just to make sure it doesn't go bad. And of course, there's some fluff ingredients, some fragrance, some extracts, things that help elevate the user experience. So one theory is the formula itself, just a bad formula. I personally don't think so. This product has been on the market since, again, at least late 2021. So we've had at least a good year and a half, which would mean that multiple batches of this have been manufactured without very many problems. And when we talk about stability of this formula, it does seem to be a stable formula. I know at least one of the TikToks said that this was a recently purchased one. So unless these were products that were sitting around for a long, long time, I don't think that the formula itself is the reason that this happened. Another thing that it could be is that it could be batch specific. So the entire batch that was manufactured at this time. I think that this might be the most likely reason. Most likely what would happen is when they were manufacturing this batch, everything didn't mix properly, particularly the magnesium carbonate, and magnesium would settle to the bottom because it is more dense. Now, this is what the density of magnesium carbonate is, and this is what the density of water is. Alcohol actually has an even lower density, which would mean that even more so the magnesium carbonate would sink, but we're gonna go with water because there are ingredients that are heavier than alcohol, so this maybe will balance out to about the density of water. In either case, the magnesium carbonate is gonna sink to the bottom. So in case you're wondering about these beautiful flowers that I have had sitting next to me this whole video, I would like to introduce you to the sponsor of today's video, Sola Wood Flowers. These are not fresh, real flowers that you pick out of the ground. These are made of Shola Pip. It's kind of like a cork, like tree type of plant. It is a sustainable plant, it's renewable, and I think they're beautiful. Because this is not a fresh flower bouquet, these are gonna look great for a long time and they will not wither away after a few days. The solo wood flowers are very popular for weddings. 
This is a bouquet. In fact, this is their sangria bouquet. And honestly, they're a lot less expensive than fresh flower wedding florals and they'll last you for years to come. But don't get it in your head that these are just for weddings. They have things like centerpieces for your table. They have wreaths. And if you're a DIY girly, they have kits that you can make your own type of arrangement and you can even dye the flowers to your desired colors. And I just love them because I think they're beautiful. You can get them in so many colors and you can reuse them again and again. If you are interested in purchasing anything from Solo Wood Flowers, my affiliate link will be down in the description box down below. So thank you in advance if you do choose to use that and please send me pictures of whatever you end up purchasing. Thank you again to Solo Wood Flowers for sponsoring today's video and we will get back to talking about the setting spray. I haven't worked directly directly with aerosol kind of formulas, but this is the picture of how the bottle looks like. And if the magnesium carbonate were to settle at the bottom, that would mean that it would pull it from the bottom. And especially if this was one of the first few times they were using this, maybe that is why they got all of it at once. When you're filling the cans, most likely it's gonna be pulling from the bottom of the mixing vessel into the containers. And if the magnesium carbonate was not mixed properly and was at the bottom, of the tank itself, then maybe they just had a big excess of magnesium carbonate in them. That could be one reason. And maybe that's why we've only seen two so far. This could also be a batch-wide issue in which, although the magnesium carbonate was not fully, fully incorporated, maybe it wasn't mixed long enough, maybe something in the manufacturing procedure wasn't followed 100% to the T, and so it may have not been fully incorporated, but was suspended into the tank and so maybe it consistently filled through all the bottles of this batch and then every batch would just have this problem. So when you do the quality testing, you're probably going to do it shortly after the batch is manufactured. I don't imagine it sitting there for a month before you would maybe test the spray on some of them. So maybe the magnesium carbonate didn't have full time to actually settle to the bottom. Again, I don't know for sure. I don't know where this is manufactured, but these are just kind of some theories on what could happen. So this could be a batch wide issue in which maybe we'll see more or maybe people have already returned them or it could only be in a small portion. And if it's not batch wide, say it's only a few people, you might still see performance issues from the remaining product, but it wouldn't be as apparent because you would have less magnesium carbonate in the other ones and basically maybe they're just spraying themselves with an alcohol spray. So that could be another thing is maybe the product's not performing the same, but you don't notice the issue because it's not a face full of white powder. Another theory that is being looked into is transporting an excessive heat. Again, I have not worked directly with aerosol sprays, but I suspect maybe this is not the case. We have at least a year and a half minimum of track records, which also includes at least one summer that this has been on the market and most likely was also getting transported from warehouses to Sephora's warehouses, etc. And I feel like last year, at least in California, was way hotter. This could still be the case, but if this were the case, then there would probably be a very, very small amount of bottles that were actually affected, which would actually be the most ideal situation for the brand. So now we're gonna get to the apology. So I'm gonna let you see his video and I want you to formulate your thoughts and let me know what you think about it down below before I get into my thoughts. This is absolutely unacceptable. Why is it coming out like that? When I say I am mortified, I have no words when I saw the videos of Sarah and Anissa. And I want to give my most sincerest apologies to Sarah and Anissa. And for anyone else that received a defective on till dawn setting spray that's spraying white, I am so, so sorry. If you guys are new, by the way, I am Patrick Starr, the founder of this brand, One Size Beauty. And I have seen so many people fall in love with this product. And then recently I've seen some people have issues with it spraying white. As the founder, I take full responsibility with my team to make this right. We have contacted those that have received and reported a defective bottle if they have not already returned it for a refund. But we take this very, very seriously. We go through extensive testing with products, all the products at one size um, for the best quality products. If you guys don't know, I love makeup. I'm obsessed with it and I want nothing but the best for my brand, but also for you that believe in this brand, One Size Beauty. So um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to DM One Size. Um, I'm also on the One Size account. You can DM us on Instagram and also on TikTok. And um, we hope that you still continue to believe in this. I love it. And just to show you, this is a brand new one that I have. Um, we're doing our best. 
and believe in me as a founder that I will make things right the best that I can and it's my first time being a founder. So for me, I thought that he took great responsibility in this. It seemed like he owned up to it and took responsibility as the CEO. He did not blame the lab, which I do appreciate. He directly apologized to the two customers who made TikToks that were affected, and he said they were investigating it. In fact, in the comments of the TikTok he posted, he did specifically mention the stability in high temperatures. But usually when you do testing initially of the product to make sure it is stable, you do test it at high temperature, somewhere around the 100 degree Fahrenheit range. They probably would have seen a similar situation if they had done this kind of testing when they initially developed this formula. In the future, obviously, we are not gonna want to have this happen again. That's gonna be on the manufacturer to put some kind of control measure in place for whatever happened that caused this. And they're gonna be the ones that ultimately have to figure that out. This is why if you have a issue with a product of whatever variety, it doesn't matter what kind of product, you should report it to customer service so that way they can figure out a solution on how to make sure it doesn't happen in the future. Posting it on Twitter or TikTok, it, the company will most likely see it, but those people should also still report it to customer service so there's actually a filed complaint that they can provide to the manufacturer to solve this problem. I know a lot of people don't like to be complainers or they don't think it's worth the trouble. You could be helping other customers in the future as well. And usually they throw in some kind of coupon or something. So, you know, you do get some benefit as well usually. So that's more on the manufacturer that they're gonna have to figure it out. On Patrick Star and One Size Beauty Zen, this is why it's really important to have someone in charge of quality, a manager or director of quality. He probably already has one because I think he has investors, but some smaller indie brands may not have someone on their staff that does this for them. This kind of position is important because they can help deal with customer complaints, they can vet the manufacturers, and when issues like this arise, they can follow up with these third-party manufacturers, and because they would be more familiar with manufacturing, with those kind of things, this person is able to work with these third-party manufacturers for these kind of investigations and be able to have a full understanding if what the manufacturer is telling them makes sense or doesn't make sense and help protect the brand in that way. If you don't have someone in your corner like that, you're taking the manufacturer's investigation at face value. And to add on that, part of what the manufacturing site and the quality director would do together is probably brainstorm things like I have just mentioned here. This is actually an area I would like to get into maybe like a quality consultant for a smaller brand or work for like a larger brand in a similar kind of capacity like I've just mentioned. So overall, I think it was a good apology video. Things that help Patrick Starr is that he has a good track record and his brand has a good track record. It's been in business since 2020. So that's a really long time with relatively very little issues that I've heard so good for him and he owned up to it and I think this is very well handled and I think other people should take notes from him so if you learned something today don't forget to give this a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe so you can keep seeing more videos like this with that I will see you in my next video bye